Since losing his wife to ovarian cancer, Lord Saatchi has lobbied to change the law so that with consent, doctors can treat dying patients with drugs that are untested and not licensed. The medical innovation bill would give practitioners legal protection to try experimental procedures on a terminally ill patient after all other options have failed. Now, the legislation is set to be debated in the House of Lords this Friday, where those against the bill are concerned about doctors acting recklessly and without proper control. We're here to discuss both sides. Is David Cahoon. He's a pharmacologist and blogger. And Catherine Taylor, she's the head of external affairs for Ovarian Cancer Action. Uh, David, firstly, let, let me ask you, uh, we've seen from your Twitter feeds that you're echoing the sentiment that uh, the government, which is behind this bill, is actually going to be bad news if it's put through. Why is this initiative, from your point of view, not a good one? It's not good because it removes the ability of patients to take any legal action if something goes wrong, because it opens the door to all sorts of quackery, and, and because it, you, in any case it's already open to doctors to prescribe what they want. I mean, it's very understandable that Lord Sarchi, whose wife died from cancer, should be very upset. The, the whole thing works on the mistaken premise that there is out there some hidden uh, cure for cancer which will be unearthed in this way, and there just isn't. Well, Catherine, David's talking about doctors pursuing quackery. Surely aren't there conditions and regulations that would protect doctors from doing this? Well, what do you make of what he has to say? Oh, good evening, Bill, and thank you for inviting me on to talk about these important issues for women with ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is a very complex disease to treat. Um, it affects some 7,000 women in the UK every year, and survival rates are very poor. Sadly, a woman dies every two hours of ovarian cancer. And part of the problems with it is that, um, unlike other better known cancers, such as breast and prostate, it's a rare cancer and treatment lags behind. So women in clinics desperately need creative, innovative treatment if they are so, to tackle So you're actually disease. saying there'll be less deaths if untested methods have been applied well before now? We believe that science needs to advance, that medicine needs to advance, and what a mechanism for doing this is to bring creative, innovative approaches into the clinic to treat well, women well, with cancer. David, isn't the, the Ebola case a classic example of where uh, untested methods have been justified, whereby two people have actually been cured by unlicensed drugs? Uh, there's no parallel, really. Ebola is a, is a viral disease, and there are treatments of sorts for viral diseases. Cancer, uh, well, some sorts of cancer, are simply unsolved problems. The ideas aren't even there. Most of the new treatments which are brought forward in the regular way are not very effective. They give you at most a few months extra life. And there but, is absolutely but, but there is no the argument that currently dying patients cannot actually help with the progress of finding cures. That's not true. Doctors can prescribe what they like and do. It, it, there's been, there's, there's no impairment under the present law to stop doctors trying... But is that true? I thought that, use. Catherine, that doctors could actually be held account and it's illegal for them to obviously pursue untested drugs. Well, I'm afraid I'm not a legal expert and, and couldn't comment on that. But what I can say is that we know how complex a disease cancer is and the future in treatment will lie in personalised medicine. And this bill is a means of removing barriers to that. I was speaking to a patient only yesterday who said to me that her hopes for this bill is that she, they, she can arrive at a personalised treatment plan yeah, but, for her but cancer. Is, but with respect, is she's a terminally ill patient, is she in the state of mind to make a decision where, she, in effect, she's being offered a miracle cure? Well, I don't think it would be fair for me to, com to comment on her particular state of mind, but what I would say is that ovarian cancer is a frightening disease, and women work with their multidisciplinary teams, with their oncologists and their nurses, and they would discuss a treatment plan, and I think that is critical to... Um, and, the success and, and, and David, do you think that seriously patients could be endangered by this uncontrolled experimentation, as you say? Because they, they are saying that, of course, doctors will be very closely monitored. And not only do the patients have to sanction this, but also medical representatives, experts, professionals in the field. Well, who? I mean, if you, it's no surprise that real, the real crackpot fringe of medicine, homeopaths, are all in favour of the Saatchi bill. And, of course, if you get a, a doctor with some balmy idea like that, there are a few of them, sadly, then they're just going to find another balmy person to, to endorse it. Uh, it, it that's, there's a real danger of that happening. The, 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 the old 
crackpots of alternative medicine are all in favour of this thing, and they would undoubtedly edge their way in. Uh, but you're, but, you're, a, you're a pharmacologist. Can I just ask you, are pharmaceutical companies worried that their profits could be hit by untested, unlicensed products, in effect, being used? Oh, no. Uh, oh, no, they're rather for it, too, because it's a bit like the Cancer Drugs Fund, which is a sort of parallel organisation to NICE, which is, uh, well, it's best characterised uh, as a, a political stunt in response to shroud-waving by Big Pharma. It'll, it'll allow drugs which aren't be very effective to be sold to the NHS at a very high price, as the Cancer Drugs Fund does. Uh, thank you very much indeed, David. Just your final comments. I mean, obviously concerns, he's talking about uh, alternative methods being used, uh, the dangers of quackery. Uh, do, do you believe, though, that he really does have some very good concerns that many people are worried about? I believe that science is advancing all the time, that these advances should be made available to women in the clinic today so that we can have a means to tackle this terrible disease. And just very briefly, we've got the debate on Friday, the government is behind it. Yes. Do you think it will actually go through? Um, I think that that is something that we will see at the end of the week. David, just finally, do you think it will go through? No matter what your concerns are, <coughs> do you think people will listen to the dissenters? O almost all the medical organisations are against it for the sort of reasons I've outlined. If the, if the government doesn't listen to them, it, it is very uh, bad indeed. The government tends not to listen to, to, to good scientific advice, so it could go through, but I hope it doesn't, because it is not necessary and it is dangerous. Well, thank you very much indeed, David Cahoon, pharmacologist and blogger, and Catherine Taylor, the head of the External Affairs for the Ovarian Cancer Action thank you, Charity. Thank you very much.